board election debate. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Uh, there's kind of a last minute invitation for me to come up here. I was giving two tests today, and one of my students, a young lady, just before <laughs> he asked me if I would help moderate this event. I'm very happy to do so, and it's a great way to end the day. So uh, it's interesting that some of my former students are candidates today, so they'll be interesting to see. First of all, I'd like to take the moment uh, to thank the map, the moderator, the vice president, and the elections director for securing these facilities and the people who are here are concerned for our student government, both watching online and here in person. I'm running for Senate President. The job of the Senate President is to manage the Senate, whether that's working with individual senators on specific issues or chairing the Senate meetings. Um, all of this basically within the accordance of Nevada Open Meeting Law. Altogether, the job of the Senate President is kind of like keeping 25 frogs in a wheelbarrow. Um, what I can bring to the Senate President or to the Senate Presidency is experience from the military, where working with all kinds of people is critical. And developing leadership skills comes early. In my time here in the CSUN Senate, I've worked with members from all ideological backgrounds to come together for issues that are important to all of CSUN. My opponent, on the other hand, has been in the Senate for two years and has yet to propose a single piece of legislation and still can't make a proper motion. I'd like to keep CSUN moving forward, and I'd like to ask for your vote for Senate President. All right, so thank you everybody once again, you know, as well for attending. Uh, my name is Vladislav Bethink. I'm one of the student body senators for the College of Sciences, and I'm actually majoring in biology and minoring in entrepreneurship. And uh, I guess today I'm asking for your vote to represent you as your student body senate president in the next legislation. So I guess, you know, coming with the next week, you have a big choice to make. You're going to be voting for your next chairman of our future legislation. For the last three years, three, I have served as a student body senator in Nevada State of Higher Education. I come and bring experience of hosting the most successful scholarships committee that has existed in CESA. I have founded and organized the first undergraduate research journal at UNLV and bringing collaboration together for my science students for them to experience shadowing in all of the medical training programs. I have a vision for CESA coming in the next election board. I want to create a different atmosphere, an atmosphere of teamwork, professionalism, and academic enrichment. This election cycle, you, as students, will have the chance to make it a better government, a gladder government, and a stronger government. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to propose you to continue to stay glad with Vlad. to our first question. Question number one. The Senate President needs to be able to manage people and carry out administrative decisions. What is your philosophy on effective management and how will you implement this in the Senate? We have two minutes each. Alex? Thank you. Um, the Senate President, as being the, not only the chair of the Senate, uh, meetings, but they're also the administrator of the Senate in all of these affairs, whether it's individual senators or meetings or anything that deals with the Senate in general. Um, like I said in my opening statement, I do have a lot of experience in the military where administrative decisions are required almost every day. Um, but we have 25 people representing nine colleges, and it's going to be it's going to be contentious. You know, at times everybody's going to have different different ideas on how to do things. But the important thing is respect rules and student business. That's what we need to focus on, is student business. This is all for the students. This isn't for personal agendas. This isn't for anything um, other than student business. What comes best for the students is best for everybody. Uh, administratively, there, there are a set of rules which we use. Robert's Rules of Order is one of them. The Nevada Open Meeting Law is one of them. Um, being able to be fluent in the language of both of these documents is key to running an effective uh, parliamentary procedure or um, anything dealing with a large group. But I think basically what I, what I said before, the student business comes first. And if you could use Robert's Rules of Order and our parliamentary procedure and the rules that we've established in the Senate, that's, that's the best thing to do. Thank you. Okay. Well, I guess uh, kind of, you know, my approach is going to come a little bit different with effective management. I understand it a little bit differently. 
So, you know, coming with management as a Senate president, you're pretty much the overseer for 25 members of the Senate. And you need to be able, you know, to manage them effectively. Other than, you know, being able to chair the meetings, uh, you know, with knowing the proper motions, procedures, Nevada Open Meeting Law, Nevada Revised Statutes, you also need to be able to speak to your uh, senators and be able to communicate with them. You know, I've served, uh, I guess, uh, three years in the Summer Business Institute as an ambassador. And over there, um, I learned something, something very important, and it's people skills. You have to be able to sit down with some of the senators, you know, that are having a, sometimes a hard time, or that they're going to be not doing, you know, their marketing hours, or if they're missing a Senate meeting, or something, you know, is happening with them, they're looking a little bit down to find out, look, what is going on? Sit them, sit them down, to, you know, prior to, you know, making an assumption or dealing a punishment. I actually want to get to know all of my senators and work together with them effectively. Um, you know, in my experience uh, as a chairman serving as, uh, for the last a year and a half um, on the scholarships committee, last year I had to make some hard decisions. Uh, I had to dismiss two of my uh, student senators because they weren't performing their duties. You have to be able sometimes to come to, you know, a hard notch and do make that decision. However, prior to that, you should be able to speak to them first. And I think that needs to be, uh, the main thing should be communication. Okay, one minute rebuttal. Thank you. Um, my opponent uh, talked about being an overseer or manage, a manager of the Senate. Uh, basically, I think the, the difference here is the Senate president is more of a coordinator. Yes, they deal with the administrative duties of the Senate, but as stated in our Constitution, the Senate can tell the Senate president how to do their jobs. So, in effect, they are not a manager of anything. They basically coordinate. Uh, that does take a lot of working with the Senate. So what we've been doing, what I've been doing personally, is working with specific senators, actually all senators is what I'm trying to do, to work on an effective bill of rules for the Senate so everybody knows what's expected of them, the Senate president knows what's expected of that position, and everybody can work together uh, in, 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 in coordination as opposed to being managed. Thank you. Okay, one minute left. Okay, and I guess just kind of on that though, you know, one thing if elected as your student body Senate president, you know, speaking of rules and everything, this book right here, this is what, you know, kind of everybody is using. Robert's Rules of Order. This is, uh, I believe, 11th edition that I have in, in front of me. And, you know, if elected, the first thing that I'm going to do out of my personal paycheck and I, is I'm going to purchase that for every single senator, all 25 of them, so they have it and they have it at their disclosure. So they can go through their own time and review those uh, motions and other different procedures. I, during my time, you know, uh, have worked with different senators as well to uh, train them in different motions. In fact, uh, on the Senate floor, I have been introducing the brand new ones, such as, you know, uh, calling something to question or, you know, just uh, with the susp suspensions. Uh, but, you know, in the end, you have to be able to train them as well. And I have effectively trained several brand new senators that we have, uh, Senator Fisher and currently my vice chair, Senator Banging, with uh, simple motions as amendments in, you know, Nevada uh, revised statutes in Nevada Open Meeting. Lead us right into our second question. <laughs> what is your experience with the Nevada Revised Statutes, Nevada's Open Meeting Law, and Roberts Rules of Order? And how will you use this experience to ensure our Constitution and bylaws are followed? Okay. Alex, two minutes. Uh, thank you. Um, as you can see, we have this book here, which is a copy of Roberts Rules of Order. Um, it is 699 pages, so 700 pages. And it is a very dry text to read. I have looked through it. I do have my own copy. I actually have the abridged copy, which is much easier to read and get references for anybody who wishes to look for anything further. Um, Nevada Open Meeting Law is one of the strictest in the country. In the, in the country. So NRS 241, it's chapter 241 of the NRS. And the main uh, statutes that we work with are NRS 241.020 and 241.033. Those are the foundation of how we run all of our meetings. So. I've already, I've already been through all of the Nevada Open Meeting Law. I have a copy of it myself, and I actually watch uh, quite frequently when the legislature makes updates. Um, going into Robert's Rules of Order, I also have a copy of my own, and I carry it with me to every Senate meeting, in addition to the abridged version, which is much easier to manage. Um, I have been uh, working closely with the current administration and the current Senate President to make sure that a lot of the, the proposals that I've made are within you know, the confines of Nevada Open Meeting Law and Robert's Rules of Order, and I also have been sitting down with specific senators and sharing my experience with them and giving them um, my experience and tips and pointers and showing them how to read the documents to make sure that they understand what they can and can't do in accordance with Robert's Rules of Order and Nevada Open Meeting Law. Um, and as 
Senate president, I think it is a good idea to make sure that the Senate president has time with every senator, so every senator knows what's expected of them. Uh, that can also, I mean, that can mean anything from uh, working over Robert's Rules of Order, just, you know, having just questions, to question and answer of the Senate in general, but specifically going over, making sure that every senator knows Robert's Rules of Order, at least the foundation, and the Nevada Open Meeting Law is the key to our success. Okay, so I guess kind of, you know, for the students, I can't see you guys are here well so well because of the lighting, but for those of you that are not in CSUN, um, what actually NRS Nevada by statutes and Nevada Open Meeting Law uh, are, they pretty much help you dictate the meeting and kind of, you know, the, the way that it, it has to be followed. In fact, one of the articles, you know, uh, suggests uh, we, two, uh, chapter 241, section uh, 20, uh, suggests that we have to place uh, on the agendas the time and place uh, that it has to come about, and that it has to be three business days prior to the respective meeting. Um, you know, the Roberts Rules of Order specifically, they allow you to operate smoothly. Simple as that. They're your guide on, uh, you know, having a, a smooth meeting. And, uh, you know, the senators that have a better knowledge with them typically have a better handling and uh, work within the Senate. However, you know, with those procedures together, uh, once again, one of these books should be provided to all of them so they're given uh, the basic background, not just the basic motion. And also for me, I guess, I actually want to go into medicine. And um, uh, again, through Summer Business Institute, when I was uh, working uh, over there at the UMC University Medical Center, I was uh, blessed to shadow Dr. Kale, uh, Dale, Dale Carrison. He is the chief of staff of UMC. And with him, I was able to attend to, uh, he chaired many of the UMC meetings, which are called the chief board meetings. And over there, the top neurosurgeons, top cardiologists, everybody came together and they were witnessing the procedure uh, you know, on the, what came to the floor. And so, you know, for me, I have already for the last uh, pretty much four or five years have been involved in this experience of seeing how meeting is chaired, and that is why, you know, I want to continue to do that, and I want to make sure that our government is an effective one. So, thank you. Alex. Well, I think uh, what Mr. Jitney has said is, is a pretty good thing. However, I want to point out some things here. Um, he said that NRS 241 about open meeting law is a suggestion. It's not. We're required by law to follow these. And CSUN has had a history of lawsuits because of people that haven't followed these. Um, basically, not following Nevada, law, or Nevada open meeting law results in a lawsuit, as we've seen with my opponent's former mentor, Senate President Jay Yoon. Um, I'm just worried that if given the chance, following these footsteps, history will repeat itself. Thank you. Okay, question number three, and our final question for the Senate President candidates. Do you see any issues with the way the Senate body functions? And what do you think needs to be changed? Let's start with Vlad this time. So thank you. So, you know, uh, serving as a senior senator in this, this student body, and, you know, serving pretty much uh, for three years as a student body senator, I have witnessed numerous experiences, and I have uh, many things that I would change in our student government. Number one, you know, our student body senators, first of all, they're students, and then they're senators. They have to be uh, able to, you know, attend their classes and be successful in them. And, you know, we're witnessing right now that some of them are missing, you know, student body meetings and, uh, perchance, not doing the, what they're supposed to be, when that is their directive task. The first thing that I would do, approved by the Senate, of course, uh, or start that with the next legislature, would move the meetings from Monday evenings onto the Thursday. What this would do is uh, it would allow also all of the committees to uh, submit their agenda proposals over the weekend, and the agenda would be posted on Mondays. So instead of you know trying to put an agenda together, they would be able to study for their classes and go to the meetings, such as the Greek meetings that come already on the weekend. Uh, the next thing you know is uh, we have to be able to provide uh, our community with what we do with. Uh, you know, multiple outreach, and that comes actually with uh, our minutes. Uh, I, according to our Title VI, uh, Chapter 601, uh, Open Meeting, Section 10, Subsection F, we're stated that the student government is required to post our meeting minutes on our website. And unfortunately, we haven't been doing that. So I guess if any of you guys wanted to sue us right now for money, you could, and, you know, you probably get some, so I would do that right after. But, you know, specifically with that, as soon as I, uh, our administration would take over, uh, we would instantly put all of the minutes up. And it won't be just the agendas. We have only one agenda posted up over there at this time, the 4302 meeting. We would have actual minutes so you can see how your senators vote. Thank you. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll go back to uh, Alex. Could you repeat the question for me? <laughs> Thank you. Let's try it here. Do you see any 
issues with the way the Senate body functions, and what do you think needs to be changed? Oh, absolutely. There's, there's plenty of things that I'd like to see changed in the Senate, but I'd also like to focus on the fact that there's plenty of things in the Senate that we're doing right. Um, we are actually having our meetings. Um, it seems that right now we've been having a lot of personal issues, which is one of the first things that I'd like to address. We are having a lot of contention in there, and it's due to the differences in ideology. Um, like I said before, we have 25 people in the Senate representing nine different colleges who are obviously going to have 25 people with 25 different opinions. I think that needs to be addressed first. The respect and the rules of our Senate need to be followed with more than anything. Um, as far as uh, changing around the fundamental way the Senate works, I don't think that that's going, to, that's going to change anything. Whether it's on a Monday night or a Thursday night, it doesn't really matter. There are just as many organizations that meet on Thursday as there are on Monday. So there's always going to be conflicts that should a student become a senator or should a, you know, a student want to join an organization, is going to have to balance. That's, that's part of being a senator. That's part of being an or, a part of any organization. But basically, I want to focus on the fact of the rules respect in student business. So student business is affected when there's disrespect and people aren't following the rules. It's true that a lot of our senators are not, or have not in the past, been doing some of the things they're supposed to do, like speaking in classes as required by our bylaws, or holding our marketing tables, which is how we send out a lot of our information. Um, but I think it's, I think it's, it's interesting to note that uh, my opponent here spoke about having the minutes posted online as required by law. It actually does say in NRS 241.020 that if you have technicalities with your with technical issues with your website, that is not um, going to prevent somebody from requesting it in person, which is easily attainable. You can easily submit a request to see all of our minutes. Um, as with everything else, uh, right now the reason why we aren't, haven't been putting things up on the website is we don't have a moderator. Senate President is a member of the Executive Board. One of the things that I would like to do is make sure that we have an effective Executive Board exec and an effective Executive Branch to make sure that all of these positions are filled. Thank you. Okay, final rebuttal from Glenn. Well, I guess kind of there's a couple of things. Um, you know, one of the things, the reason why we don't have uh, some of our meetings posted is because we're not filling some of the positions. And one of them right now is that we're actually trying to eliminate some of them, like Chief of Staff, where we could be utilizing that position to be putting up those minutes and having those come together and assisting the Senate President, since Chief of Staff assists the office, to help directly to, you know, moderate that. We also have a graduate assistant to business manager, Savannah Volterra, who keeps all the minutes. You know, free time uh, to him, I think it would be wise for the Senate to uh, delegate that to him, to have that present. And there's also one more thing. I guess uh, my opponent, Alex Murdoch, he mentioned that we, uh, you know, don't come around with uh, proposals of bylaws. Um, uh, I'll tell you what, you guys, let's try to draft one real quick right now. So we have, you know, uh, I'm a scholarship chairman, so we have a scholarships uh, uh, bylaw that's on uh, Title Eight of uh, Chapter 813, brand new scholarship, because we have 12 of them. So let's name one for, you know, President Ciabola, one for pugs. So, you know, we're going to come with eligibility. If you save a pug, we're going to give you a scholarship. Section two, uh, what you have to do pretty much for that to receive it, you have to remember, uh, again, the 2.5 GPA. Gentlemen, thank you. You brought up some very interesting ideas. Uh, this concludes, except for our closing statements. We'd like to get uh, closing statements from um, like the first two minutes and then follow by Alex. Okay, so section one if you save a pug, you're able to propose a scholarship. Uh, that's going to be, you know, eligibility. You have to maintain a 2.5 GPA, you have to have a handsome beard, and you have to be pretty much, you know, uh, coming into the rescue mission. And section three, you have to, you know, the amount of the award. So we're going to be uh, having a $1,000 award. We're going to propose it for, you know, fall and the spring, just the way that we have it right now. And then uh, the, the following section, the section four, which is you have to maintain that trim, handsome beard, and you have to keep saving those bucks. So right now, you guys, we just drafted together a bylaw. I, uh, and all of you guys, I think, now can run for student body Senate president. So what do you guys think about that? And, you know, on that note, I just uh, want to make sure you guys that it's a very serious decision that you guys are going to be making. If you want to be the change of the student government, if we want to propel it forward, just like with, you know, the DNA sequences, we have to evolve. We have to be placing, you know, uh, the DNA polymerases to motion it forward. My ticket will ensure 
that our, our student government remains a strong student government, that it will be a better student government, and once again, it's going to be a gladder student government. You guys, I hope that at the end of the next weeks, the results will be in your favor. Well, that was a nice closing statement. Um, I'd like to say a few things on that. First of all, like I said in my opening statement, I do have a lot of experience in managing people um, with all different kinds. In the military, I've, I've had several different experiences uh, making executive decisions, um, sometimes decisions that aren't popular. However, I want to touch on a few things, though. The chief of staff is specific to the Senate president, or not the Senate president, but the student body president. It has nothing to do with the Senate president. Um, as far as proposing legislation, the Senate president does not propose legislation. I would not propose legislation, although I would work with senators to make sure that they do propose legislation. The simple fact of the matter is the Senate president is in charge of making sure the Senate runs smoothly, whether it's using the Nevada Open Meeting Law or whether it's using the Robert's Rules of Order. That's the job of the Senate president. That's what I want to focus on. My experience both in the military and working with the Senate, the current Senate, has given me a, a lot of experience in managing my time, managing the affairs of other people, and helping other people whenever they need it. So what I want to do is keep doing that. Our ticket obviously has, has the most experience of any collective ticket here, and I want to keep what we're doing, uh, keep what we're doing basically, and that's keeping CSUN moving forward. If you look at the history of CSUN through the previous administration, which includes one of my ticket mates, it will show that CSUN is in now in a better place than it was two or three years ago, and that's what we want to keep doing, is keeping, keep doing this, keeping CSUN moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Alex Murdoch and Vlad Zinni. Let's bring up our Vice President candidates, Konami Espinosa and James Phelps.